Hey guys, today I'm doing a video which is gonna go in the place of all the extra bits and that'll be forever and ever because I'm gonna change my blogging thing so instead of just talking about like stuff that went on this week I'm gonna pick actual subjects because subjects are more interesting than I did this, this happened and stuff. So yeah, today I am talking about one of the things that happened this week, but it's related to the channel. Uh, CRS, well it's not related to the channel, but you know, it's related to me. Uh, the CRS7 failure. Um, but before we get into all that, uh, I want to talk about 3D printed Kerbals, because my girlfriend for our one year anniversary bought me a 3D printed Jebediah Kerman, which was awesome. Which is everything I love. Um, because, well, it, well, I'll just hold that up, because uh, well, obviously I fucking love Kerbal Space Program, and 3D printing is the bomb. So, the thing about it is, it's all one piece. You can see how it's really complicated, but because it's 3D printed, it's all one little piece. And you can order these online. Uh, I'll probably link it in the description. Um, and you can order all three of them. I think you might even be able to order planets. I haven't looked, because I didn't want to just go and look up the price. Um, but yeah, so it's a little Jebediah Kerman in a seat looking super happy, and you can see it's like super detailed. I'll try and get... Oh, there's not enough light, but you can see... He's got his tongue in his mouth, and you, you can actually see there's a little, you probably can't see, but there's an actual underneath to his tongue, because they the way 3D printing works is they print it like layer by layer, so I don't know which way it was printed, because there's kind of lots of little bits where it looks like it was printed sideways and stuff, but say it was printed like that, they'd print the uh, bottom layer of the seat, then the first little bit of the layer of seat, and these are all like a fraction of a millimeter thick, um, and build it up so you can see how they can do the cavity in the helmet quite easily, and... Um, and things like that, so, uh, yeah, um, there's no waste material either, which is weird, although it does feel really weird, it feels kind of like wood, and I'm not sure if you'll be able to see this, but the edge kind of looks, it's not very good quality, but you can maybe see that it has rings kind of like wood, the way it was printed, that's why I thought it was printed like that, but it's just a really weird feel, um, but yeah, no, I, I freaking love this, and you can see, uh, all the little places, like at the back of the chair, that are hollow, where they save material. Um, but yeah, there is no waste material. I thought that's really cool. I think um, these are awesome. You can buy them. I'll link the thing in the description if I can find it. Well, you can probably just Google it. Um, but yeah, I thought that was really cool, and it's really nice. And uh, yeah, it's just, I, I don't know. If I ever go to space, I'll take it with me first. Jebediah in space sort of thing. Um, unless someone beats me to it. But anyway, yeah, that's that's awesome, and that'll be on my desk for eternity. But yeah, that was nice. And now the horrible bit. The CRS7 launch failure. That was a bit... That was a bit horrible, wasn't it? Um, I was watching it live when it exploded, and you could kind of see just before it exploded there was a problem with something. Um, and then it just kind of exploded. So basically what happened um, was... Uh, if you don't know, uh, on the on the uh, SpaceX's CRS7 launch, which is their seventh commercial resupply to the International Space Station, um, where they were taking cargo, so no one died, um, but they were taking cargo and some student experiments <laughs> to the International Space Station, and I think about 150 seconds or something into the flight, uh, uh, the, there was an over-pressurization -pressuri in the top stage, and it exploded. Um, caught, there was a, the first stage was, super, was like, it was nominal, so nothing went wrong. Um, but there was an over-pressurization in the second stage, and it caused the rocket to explode. Although there were some interesting things, like after the rocket appeared to disintegrate, um, Dragon was still sending uh, telemetry from, uh, from, from, the, from the rocket. So that was pretty interesting, so it looks like it may have survived. And apparently, um, according to some sources, uh, <laughs> it would have been within the, um, uh, within the kind of uh, criteria for the uh, Dragon 2 escape system to work. So yeah, uh, if it was humans, they probably would have survived, uh, because it would have used its escape system. And the thing about Dragon 2 is, even if the rocket had been spewing out things, it wouldn't have cut up any parachutes, because it doesn't use parachutes. It does have parachutes, the Dragon 2, but it's made to land on engines. So if the pod or something, well, the capsule gets hit by a piece of metal or something, it probably won't cut up parachutes. And the thing is, I know they don't use solid fuel in Falcon 9s, but if you have a parachute and you were bought during a solid... A launch that's using solid fuel boosters that'll probably just go all over your parachute and burn it up as it's little little grains of burning stuff. So yeah, it's much safer um, <laughs> unless you're on a Falcon. No, but it was uh, yeah. So they're going to be grounded for a while until they've completed their investigation. The FAA has um, named it a mishap, so it's not and no one's at fault. Um, although, well, you can throw things around, but no one's technically at fault. 
Uh, so they're going to con SpaceX can conduct their own investigation, and the FAA can help. NASA's offered to help. Everyone's just basically offered to help because obviously everyone wants them, you know, back back and going and things. Um, so yeah, that's that's going to be okay. They're going to be probably grounded for a while. They said less than a year. Um, so hopefully it'll just be a few months and they'll figure it out because this was another attempt to land on the pad, which was the thing I first thought of was that's going to really set that back. Um, luckily it was nothing to do with the landing equipment because that would have been horrible there. They would have to get, take it away. Um, but yeah, so they, they, they'll they be back on their feet reasonably soon. Uh, but yeah, the problem, the main problem is that's the third launch failure. Well, not launch failure. It's the third failure on a supply mission to the International Space Station in a year. Because there was an orbital sciences launch, which uh, exploded on the pad quite spectacularly, which was, well, that was that was, well, pretty spectacular. Less uh, less punishing to me. I was just ugh, it was horrible to watch the SpaceX one. But anyway, um, it was I love that rocket. It's my favorite fucking rocket. No, but uh, yeah. So there was the orbital sciences uh, launch failure. There was the Russian cargo launch, which the launch went off fine actually. Um, or did it? No, no, it didn't quite go off. The launch. The first, the main bit, I think it was actually another second stage failure. Um, it did get to orbit, but it was on a path that was just not not workable, so they couldn't go to the International Space Station, and they lost that cargo. And so now the space station's running pretty low on supplies, um, because, well, they keep quite a long you know, backup of food if a launch, like, they can usually withstand maybe two launch failures, but this has been three. Luckily, Dragon was mainly car carrying science and uh, <laughs> carrying science, carrying uh, scientific payload. It was carrying mostly um, experiments, a few student experiments, which is very sad, very hard for them. Um, but yeah, it's still, that's all obviously pretty awful as well because that's what the station's for. It's for doing science, um, doing scientific experiments. But they had so they've lost a lot of that. They probably lost a good deal of food, and they lost the ULA, not ULA, uh, the Boeing. Um, docking adapter because they were bringing up a new docking adapter one of two for the uh, commercial crew program Which they'll be part of so Boeing is gonna be like what the fuck SpaceX you lost our docking adapter <laughs> But yeah, I assume they'll just build another one. Uh, it'll be fine It's just a bit of a bit of a shame and a bit worrying for the station, but they have another um, Progress vehicle the Russian one coming up here this year which uh, will in I think about a month so they're gonna have a lot of Supplies pretty soon. They're going to have another Cygnus spacecraft, which is orbital sciences, near the end of the year. So that's that's all good. They've got a uh, well. The way that the Russians are dealing with it is they're putting an older top stage of their rocket on top of their current rocket, so there's less chance of a failure. So that's all. It's all pretty good. Um, and I think they're sending uh, the Japanese are sending up another H2B spacecraft, which I thought they cancelled, but I imagine maybe they just brought it back for this, uh, or just maybe they were doing another one. So yeah, there are. It's it's going to be fine for the space station as long as no no one else has a failure basically. So quite a lot of um, quite a lot of focus on the the, next, the coming up the upcoming uh, progress vehicle. Um, and obviously, if it all goes wrong, if there's just not enough food, they could just get in their spacecraft, their Soyuz, and come home. So it's not no one's going to die, but it would be horrible to not have anyone in space for any time. Um, so yeah, it's all a bit, you know, a bit, a bit sad for the space. I mean, this stuff happens, but it's still a bit sad for the whole space industry, and especially because it's SpaceX. You know, there were the, um, they've had, ne they've never had a Falcon 9 failure. They've had one semi failure where an engine went out, but they still went to orbit like freaking badasses. Um, and obviously the Falcon ones blew up like crazy. Uh, I think they had a 40% success rate with them, but then they just built a better rocket. Um, but yeah, so. You know, it's a shame. I was really hoping they'd land on the pad, all of that stuff. But it's not to be. And this stuff happens, so we'll all get through it. <gasps> oh, God! No, it's fine. Um, But, um, yeah, so this has been a bit of a long one. Uh, but, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you're looking forward to this sort of vlogging format, because I think it'll be better, because I just used to do all the extra bits and then a date, and everyone's like, I don't know what that's going to be about. So, yeah, I'm just going to try this, because I'm, I, I like vlogging, but I, I kind of want to do more subjects, and, you know... Jeb's pretty great, so I'll, I'll see you next time.